Hi guys, it's Phil here. I'm doing a little series of uh, videos for you. Uh, this time it's on painting. Um, so as you can see here, I've got my Def Corp of Krieg Army slowly getting built up. Um, and I want to add some so grenadiers. So I've got two squads of grenadiers here. In addition, I've got some uh, heavy flamer team and some specialist weapon guys, which are the melters and heavy stubbers. Uh, really, I only want the melters for my current list that I'm doing, but I might as well paint up everything at the same time and I'll explain why shortly uh, and right at the very front you can see guys that clearly aren't the grenadiers these are the quartermaster cadre and his uh, retinue and I'll just quickly show you one strip of the grenadiers so you can see what these guys look like and again all of these guys are missing their arms and has been replaced with a bit of blue tech and again I'll explain that in a minute so I want to get these guys painted as quickly as possible, but to the highest standard that I can possibly do it. So I'm doing two different um, sort of painting techniques all at the same time. One of them is production line. So as you can see, production line is like how I think is mass produced. And I plan on painting all of these models at the same time. I've got them all glued down to strips, which means I can, well, I say glue down, blue tack down. Um, to strip so I can easily handle them and it means I can paint one guy, paint the next, paint the next and I, I'm handling lots all at once and I'm not being too fiddly with individual models. But what it does mean is I can pick them up, carry them around and I can just spray all of these guys down and they're not going to fly everywhere. Um, so what does that allow you to do? It sort of helps speed things up. Firstly, just from a base coating and uh, layering point of view, I can basically put on my chaos black undercoat and then I'll be putting some grey down and I'll be using my airbrush to speed it all up and I'll be painting them all at once in one go. Afterwards I'll be doing individual paints all at the same time so by that I mean for example the browns. I'll be doing the browns like the boots and the masks. I'll start on this guy, I'll work my way along and then keep doing it and then by the time I've got to the last guy that model, the first model will be dry and then I can swap paint colours and then carry on with another colour and I'll just keep repeating that process. That really speed things up because you're not constantly drying your brush, chain, you know, washing it, cleaning it, changing colours, fiddling around with pots, so you're really minimising the amount of effort that you have to do and it also kind of builds up the army gradually, sort of one colour at a time rather than just doing one model, focusing on one model, then going, great, now I've just got one model. But the, at least this way, you're kind of getting there and you're doing it all at the same time with the whole army. Now, this is probably sort of the limit at the moment. I've got, you know, 5, 10, 15, 35 models here, I think. It's <laughs> a quick count. Yeah, so that is sort of like the limit that you want to be doing. I've managed to do like 55, like platoon size, like double two platoons all at once. And you know, that is really pushing it for the number of models that you want to do all at once. So at least one squad, if not two, because they're identical, that makes it even better. In addition to that, what you might have noticed is all these guys are missing arms. So this is a technique called sub-assembly. So what I've done is I've left the arms off. The arms are paint up separately and then attach them afterwards. What you'll notice is about here, I'll be affixing the little um, transfer, which is their numbering, uh, which it will be really difficult to do if the hotshot las gun is in the way. No detail is going to be obscured, so it means I can paint these models up really easily. And then I have the fiddly task afterwards of gluing all the arms together. Uh, what I've done here actually is I've scored all the um, arm sockets so the when I finally attach the arms there'll be a bit of grip going on for the glue and then I've actually used a bit of uh, blue tack to cover these up so what will happen is I'll paint these up completely and then once I've done that I'll ping these bits of blue tack off so I'll get a completely um, paint free area so I don't have to scrape off the paint afterwards and what that will mean is the arms themselves can um, attached to the body properly um, and there'd be like really good contact and also the benefit of this is it actually motivates me to get my army painted before I play it and that's one of the great things you know I enjoy painting I know lots of people find it a real hardship 
But I think if I just glued them all together, I would start playing with them and then I'd have no motivation to paint them. Whereas at least this way, it's like for me to play them, I've got to get them painted. And that means at the end of the day, I've got a really nicely painted army or, you know, as best as I can paint it, ready to play against someone else. And it just makes the game that much more enjoyable having a, a painted army. So I'm at this stage where they're good to go in terms of basing, but there's a few things I've done to get here. So step one, I've taken them out of their packets and I've washed them and you think, Hmm, okay, why why do you need to wash them? But these guys are made of resin from Forge World and they are often have like this kind of greasy shine on them and that's effectively the releasing agent um, which is to help aid, aid the models popping out of the mold. So what you need to do is put all of the models, stick them into a little tub of very hot water with some like soapy dishwasher liquid type thing. Um, and that will help lift it up. So leave it in there for like five minutes. Don't use boiling water because that will, you know, potentially damage it, but use very hot water because that helps lift this agent off. And then at the end, give it a good scrub with a brush, like a little toothbrush, scrub the models down. And it's a bit time consuming, but it pays off because what you might find if you haven't done this stage is that when you spray the paint on or you, you know, just use normal paints, and you're not you know spraying even like undercoating the undercoat won't stick to the model because and it will just come off as a releasing agent so you might find you, your what should be beautifully painted models end up flaking and cracking and you end up kind of killing off your model so get them washed get them then dried afterwards and then you've got to go through the laborious process of cleaning off the mold lines now a lot of people don't do this and it always kind of looks a bit of a shame when they don't on a really nicely painted model. I'm guilty of it in some cases, uh, but I really try and do my best to get rid of all the mould lines because it just makes that model look so much better once it's finished. Once I've done that, I'll be on to step three, which is I haven't had to do on any of these, which is bend them back into shape. So. A lot of models, especially with larger pieces or with the arms or with the guns, might be bent a little bit and that, that's just how they come. But it's quite easy to heat up the model using some hot water and then bend them back into shape and, you know, it won't break. It, 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 trust me, it'll just be perfectly fine. Now you can do that at the washing and drying stage, but I kind of like to keep the two separate because I can kind of concentrate on one over the other. Um, once it's all bent into shape, you then need to green stuff your models. So there'd be little air bubbles caused in the resin process. And these air bubbles, you can either use liquid green stuff to fill it, or you can use actual green stuff. Uh, but you've got to use really tiny, tiny amounts because all you're doing is filling in tiny little holes. Let me try and find an example for you. So on this middle guy, you can just see, there was a tiny little hole down at the bottom of his coat and all I've done is use a bit of green stuff to fill that in and then again on this model. Now using green stuff in tiny amounts you need to use a sculpting tool and you need to make sure your fingers are wet, your surface is wet and your tool is wet otherwise green stuff will literally stick to everything and it is a real pain to use. Once that's done on all the models I'll then base them. So sticking these guys to this. And that's where you can get creative with some models. Like you can use like this, use a bit of rock to make a feature out of it. Or for example, on this guy, I've used the GW basing kit to create a sort of more themic base. But on the whole, I know I don't need to do this for these guys because these are gonna end up looking like they're on the muddy trenches and I'll do a little bit of basing at a later stage because what I'll do is I'll paint all of these guys then I'll do the real sort of basing detail afterwards but I know a lot of people you like to do the basing sort of stage now which is perfectly entitled to but I kind of want to be able to get in the model paint it all up like around the foot area feet area without there having any other niggling things in the way so that's all the five steps so it's washing, drying, 
Step two, cleaning the mould lines. Step three, bending it into shape if it needs it. Step four, green stuffing all the air bubbles or you know any bits that's been miscast. And then step five, sticking them onto the base. Once you've done that, stick them onto little strips of cardboard so that it's easy to pick up and handle. Now that's actually a big job and most people just want to get straight into the painting side of things. And that's actually probably the worst way to do it because although it means you can play the models quite quickly, what you really want to do, well in my, you know, what I want to do is have a really nicely painted army. So actually this whole side of it is quite important, but it's also really time consuming. I've spent literally like two solid days just doing this for these guys. Admittedly it's taken a while because I'm doing several squads at once. If I was doing maybe one squad at a time, it would actually be quite quick. But as I said, when you're painting, bulk painting, you know, production line, speeds it up overall. So I'm going to go off and I'm going to undercoat it with my Chaos Black Spray. And then I'll kind of show you where I've got to with that. And then I'll basically be digging out my airbrush and I'll be putting down the base coats. Thanks very much.